Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads, and in this video we're going to be continuing with our snowboard build, and I'm really excited because the step that we're up to is a really fun one, we're going to be making the mold. In the last video I asked what method you guys would want to see me use to press this deck, and the overwhelming winner was a vacuum bag. The runner-up, by the way, was a pneumatic press. That wasn't on the list. I don't have a pneumatic press. But hey, if you want me to build one, why not check out the Patreon and pitch in for some materials? Let's do it! But okay, we're going with a vac bag, and that means I only need a one-sided mold, and to get started, I need to draw up a template. I took some initial measurements from an existing board just to get an idea of the heights involved. Then I pulled out the template I made for my board design and transferred some of the key features over to the wood I'm using for my mold template. I marked the nose and tail, the outer binding mounting points, and the areas of the board where the contact points are going to live. You guys have been asking about the base profile of the board, and now I finally have an answer for you. I'm going with a flat profile between the bindings with some rocker out to the contact points, and then curving up for the tip and the tail. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark a line for the rocker for my tail, and then draw on the curve of the end of the board. Then I'm going to do the same for the nose. I'm not being super precise about any of this. I'm eyeballing curves and dimensions that look good to me because honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. But if you imagine this board pushing through some powder, I think that nice long nose curve and slight rocker will help give the board lift, keep the tip up out of the snow so that I can float over the deep stuff. Next I moved over to the bandsaw to cut out my template. And you might be able to see here that I adjusted my tail geometry to make both the rocker and the curve of the tip a little more shallow. The original plan was to build the mold using 2x4s, but I read some discussion recently that said you can actually use insulation foam for a snowboard mold if you take some precautions. Foam is cheaper than wood, it's easier to work with, and while it isn't as durable, at this point I don't even know if I'm going to like this shape or not. So this is going to be a cheap prototyping mold that I'll rebuild out of stronger materials later on if I like the outcome. I set the fence of my table saw to the height of the mold, then started cutting my foam spars. I'm using 2 inch thick R10 insulation, which should be nice and stiff, and I'm cutting myself 7 spars for a mold that will be 14 inches wide. This should give me plenty of room for the layout. Next, I marked all my spars so I can cut them to the same length. Then transferred my mold template onto the spars. Then it was over to the bandsaw to cut them all out. Beautiful. Seven mold segments. If you wanted to try a two-sided mold, your cutoffs here could be used to make the other side. Mine's only going to be one-sided, but I'm still going to hang on to these because I can probably get another mold or two out of them for longboards or something. Next we need to join the mold segments together, and to do that I'm using spray adhesive, which gets sticky. So first I'm going to lay down some paper to protect my workbench. and get gluing. I'm gluing my spars together in sections, two at a time, and I'm doing my best to keep the curves from the template lined up.
The template and bandsaw method isn't particularly precise, so inevitably there are going to be places where the sections don't quite line up. To take care of that, I'm going to use a microplane to go over the whole mold, working from both sides to level out the surface. I want to be sure that the base of my board will come out nice and flat, so I grabbed a straight edge, and every inch or so, I just checked the mold side to side to make sure the bottom of it was nice and flat. I was actually really surprised at how flat the mold came out, so I just grabbed a sheet of 80 grit sandpaper and smoothed out the surface left from the microplane. And with that, the foam work is done, but there's another step I can take to give myself a chance at a really nice flat base for our deck. I'm gonna line the mold with a sheet of aluminum. Ooh. This is just some 14 inch wide aluminum sheet that I got from the hardware store. And in addition to giving the mold a super flat surface, it's also gonna prevent the harder components of the board, like the edges and the binding inserts, from pushing into the foam and deforming my mold. On top of all that, you can also wax the aluminum so the board releases from the mold without destroying it. Wins all around. Now, as I said, I'm using a vac bag to press this board, and we don't want to risk any sharp metal puncturing the bag. So I'm going to take a couple steps to try to keep all of my equipment in one piece. First thing to do is to round off all the corners of the aluminum. And then I'm going to come in with some electrical tape and wrap all the edges of the sheet. And hopefully that will be enough to protect the plastic of the vacuum bag. And with that, I'm done. This is my new powder focused snowboard mold. I'm still debating whether or not to back the foam on some plywood or something. If I do decide to do that, I'll probably do it off camera and I'll just use more spray adhesive to get the job done. But yeah, that's that. With the mold finished, we're in the final stretch of this build. I've got a couple odds and ends to take care of before my layup. I've got to join the veneers for my top sheet. I've got to drill my binding mounting holes. I've got to do a couple things to make sure that all my components uh, align properly in the mold. But then it's going to be time to press this thing, which is very exciting. So, if you dig it, you should go ahead and subscribe. That way you'll get all the notifications and you can stick around for all the awesome DIY board sports stuff we do here. If you want me to build a pneumatic snowboard press, or tackle any number of other crazy advanced projects here on the channel, why not join the growing group of awesome supporters over on Patreon? The support that they give on that platform keeps the shop flush with materials and allows me to keep showing you guys how to make cool stuff. And if you've got any comments or questions, leave them down below. I do my best to get to them. I always love having you guys come along with me for the journey. Thank you so much. So until next time, I'll see you soon. Y'all, we got our first big powder dump last night. It is up to my knees. So I'm gonna edit this video, I'm gonna get it uploaded tomorrow, and then I'm gonna go do some riding. I'm gonna go hit the powder boards, I'm gonna do some hiking, I might try to catch a ticket to a resort if I can get my hands on one, but like, gotta go, gotta go, the snow's here, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go.